stay upstairs to the press box. Go ahead, another question. Hey, Kyle, Jeff Birchfield, John City Press. Uh, last few races here, we've seen just guys being able to pass pretty much all on the outside, but uh, you were able to make quite a few passes on the inside today. Yeah, I mean, you got to have a good race car. It's like I mentioned earlier. You know, Dave and I were, were working real hard yesterday and kind of unsure about what we had, but uh, when you get in the race, you, you have to adjust and you have to keep moving yourself around a little bit. And for me, I felt like, um, you, you know, you learn some things about this racetrack and the truck race and the nationwide race, how to pass, how to run low, how to run high. The track rubbers up, you know, there's, it goes through stages throughout a run. So, um, excuse me, just learning all of that and putting it all together and then getting out there and just utilizing your tools and, um, you know, and just being able to put all of it to work. Stay upstairs. Another question. Go ahead. Uh, Jay Pennell with front stretch and all left turns. Could you talk about the, the green flag stop you had with 100 to go? Were you planning on pit, pitting that lap? Or was that a heads-up move where you saw McMurray come in and just got to line before he did? Could you talk about that? Uh, no, uh, Dave actually said two to go. And um, I, I always keep my eye out and keep peeled for when guys start coming in. Because in this day and age with this car, um, you know, when anybody comes in and puts on fresh tires, they're normally about a second faster. Um, so you, you can't give up that time. I mean, if Mur McMurray came in and got off pit road, he'd, have a, he'd be able to run a second faster lap time than I would. Uh, which is an awful lot of distance. So I knew I needed to come in with him, but I was able to outbreak him and uh, get to his outside and, <clears throat> and get to pit road, get slowed down. And uh, we had a really good pit stop and then exiting. You know, I exited really hard and really fast too, where um, I think when I came out, I was half a straightaway plus um, on him. But, you know, the double zero actually jumped us because he pitted before us, you know, so you could see the distance that he was behind me when he pitted. And then when we all came out of the pits, he was still ahead of me a ways. So, that's, that's the distance I'm talking about, and I, I couldn't give that up to the one. Other questions in the press box? Anybody? Yes, uh, Nate Ryan, USA Today. Uh, if I could get both Kyle and uh, Dave to address this. Uh, Kyle, Friday after cup practice, you didn't sound like a guy who was going to win last night or tonight. Did, uh, what happened here? Did, did the crew make the cars that much better over two days, or was, was your standards were a little bit too high after that practice? Is that a question for Dave, too? I was going to let Dave go. For both of them. Go ahead, Dave. Uh, yeah, I think it's a combination. I think, uh, you know, Kyle was working on some, some race lines. I think he could have gone out and practiced and posted quicker times if he just wanted to, to post quick times. But he's trying to work on his race car. Uh, and we were off a little bit. Um, we definitely didn't have a car capable of winning. Uh, but Kyle just kept, kept his head in the game, kept giving us feedback, giving us direction. Uh, he did a great job this weekend of directing the race team and, and uh, giving us information so we can make good decisions this morning. Uh, likewise, I gotta give Jason credit a lot of, uh, I gotta give Jason Ratcliffe a lot of credit too, uh, because I called him up this morning and said, look man, you weren't a race winning car in practice, what did you do? And uh, he told me what he did to work on his car to make it better, which gave me more confidence in making the changes that I need to make today. Uh, so I like to say that both teams improved their race car but I think you got to give Kyle Busch a lot of credit, too, for knowing what he needed to race. And then when they dropped the green flag, he knows how to race. And, and yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm hard on myself, and I might be hard on my guys. But, uh, you know, it boils down to wanting the desire, you know, the desire to win, wanting to win. And, um, <clears throat> you know, just trying to work more towards our goal. And, you know, when I don't feel like we're there, which <laughs> uh, it's hard to tell in, the, in this day and age where you're at in practice, you you can know sometimes when you have a really good car, and you can know sometimes when you don't. And we've, we kind of haven't been able to have the speed that we've wanted to show in practice. But when it comes down to the race, you know, we're right there. We're not bad. I mean, Denny last week, look, you guys talked about all about how bad Denny was, 33rd in qualifying and back in the pack in practice, and we swapped cars because we sucked so bad. And then, look, he goes out and almost has the opportunity to win the race. And we should have been right there with him if it wasn't for me driving a thing in the fence. So... Um, you know, our, our stuff might not practice well, but, um, you know, when we go to work and work on things and work on the drivability of the car, the cars seem to be driving pretty well where we can race them and be comfortable racing them and um, take them to the front. Anything else in the press box? Dustin Long, Landmark Newspapers. Um, Kyle, how does this win or does it matter in, in sense of helping you for the chase? Uh, obviously, you know, so many of the tracks in the chase are mile and a half. Maybe you get something out of here to help you with Dover, but for winning tonight, maybe some of the struggles you've had the last few weeks, 
how does this really help prepare you or what ways can it help you or if it, at all with the chase? Well, I mean, you know, like I said last night or earlier Friday, I mean, you know, this win will be over tonight and uh, we go back to work tomorrow in, or Monday in getting our stuff prepared for Atlanta. We have an off week, but we need to get our stuff going there for there. Um, I mean, you can say, yeah, it's a confidence booster. We still know how to win. We know how to do this. Like I mentioned earlier, you know, it's Bristol. It's a place we kind of expect to run well at. It's a place I expect to run well at. Dave's given me a, a great car today. It's his first win here, so that's pretty cool. And i um, happy for him, of course, and, and the rest of the guys to be able to repeat and come back from our, our win here last year and do it again. So, um, you know, I feel like going on into Atlanta, it's going to be a test for us to see how good we are again at the mile and a half stuff. And then, you know, we go to Richmond, another one of our racetracks that I tend to well, run well at. And Dave gave me an awesome car last time. So looking forward to that. And then, uh, then the chase starts. You know, we hit reset, and we got 10 weeks to show what we got, and hopefully it's enough. Anything else in the press? Sit from the press box. Good. Let's go <laughs> to uh, Jeff Gluck, Marty, and I think Newton. Go ahead, Jeff. Jeff Gluck from SBNation.com. Uh, Kyle, we, we obviously know you're a perfectionist because you're never happy unless you're winning or you have a really fast car. But the other day, it struck me that you'd said that you, know, you only enjoy a race win when it happens and then it's on the next one. Having swept this weekend, having done this tonight, going into an extended period, are, will you do you allow yourself to enjoy this a little bit, or if you have some late model race on Wednesday and you finish second, are you going to be pissed and go back to, you know, <clears throat> and is that is that what drives you that that being hard on yourself, like you're talking about being hard on on your guys and stuff like that? Is that what keeps you motivated? Um, if I had a late model race on Wednesday, if I ran second, then yeah, I'd be mad. I mean, yeah, this one's over. You know, we just won. It's awesome. It's great for the team. You know, we got an off day tomorrow. We can celebrate, do whatever we want to do. I'm sure Dave's going to invite me over to the new pool. And uh, and uh, we'll tear that thing up with the uh, pirate ship and everything else we got for uh, for David, little David. But, um, yeah, I mean, Wednesday is a uh, – J.D., close your ears. It's an off-road race for me on Wednesday, going to do that for the first time. And uh, it's going to be fun, so that'll be a treat. And then uh, next week, you know, running the truck race at Chicago. So, you know, if I don't win there, yeah, I'm going to be upset. I'm there to win, and I feel like I should be able to win. And, um, you know. Um, Is being that hard on yourself what keeps you motivated? <laughs> you have to have that kind of yeah. If I came out of here every week happy for losing I'm not here for the right reasons that's when I need to go away so I'm I'm here to try to win and if I don't win I might not entirely be happy unless you know we um, you know we struggle through a day and then all of a sudden boom we ran second or third it's like all right yeah we got we got a good day out of here that was good you know good points day whatever but you know it's that's kinda just the way I am that's kinda what you guys have seen for the years that I've been here and probably the years to come Marty, uh, we always hear about how important chemistry is between driver and crew chief. And there are some guys that just can't do it. Some teams just aren't able to do it. But you seem to do it no matter who's crew chiefing. You win. Why? Are you just that smart? <laughs> uh, I don't know that I'm that smart. I mean, having smart people that work on your car and can give you what you need, I, I feel like... You know, sometimes I lead them in the wrong direction. You know, I don't give them exactly – I tell them what I'm feeling, but I don't tell them what I need. You know, and I feel like that sometimes mixes us up and kind of heads us in the wrong direction. And, you know, we've uh, we've had those talks and stuff. But, um, you know, this week I felt I just – there was something that, kept, that I kept missing. There was something that I just didn't have that I've had here in the past. And I talked to Dave about it, and we were like, you know – I mean, you can. I even bring up the guy's name. It's like, you know, when I was with Steve, you know, we I was able to do this. You know, these were the things that that I was able to do, and we could get the th the car to kind of rotate here, and it had this drive off, and he doesn't get offensive to it, you know. And that's what makes a strong team. That's what makes everything go right. And he'll he'll go back to the books, and look at the notes that that Steve has and stuff like that. And so that's what we do to get better, is just uh, try to communicate, work ourselves, and um, and do the things that we know how to do, and be smart about it. David, you have a question? Chad, get him the mic, please. Yeah, 
you know, Kyle, a uh, couple years ago, you dominated the regular season and then got in the chase and things went bad right away. Uh, the last nine races until tonight, not going really great for you guys. Mm -hmm. But do you feel that there's something with this team and, and in you right now that makes you better prepared to race for a championship than you did a few years ago? Um, I'm not going to say that just in one night we've we've turned it around. You know, I feel like we've got to show ourselves next week, like I mentioned, at Atlanta, a place I'm not very strong at. And again, at Richmond, another place I, I tend to run well at. So, you know, we need, <clears throat> you know, for the last nine weeks the way we've run, we could have finished better. We should have finished better. I made mistakes. Um, you know, maybe Dave would admit to making just a couple a couple of mistakes, but you know, I feel like we do it as a team, and we win and lose as a team. That's what we've talked about, and that's what uh, that's what we're here to do going forward. Is what we did this weekend. You know, just keep communicating on what we can do to try to make the cars better. I've had winning cars at places before, so there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to return that. But sometimes guys just hit hit it and figure it out a little bit better than you, and you you kind of got to comprehend that too sometimes. What do I say all the time? He beats himself up. <laughs> he, uh, he, he I ask why. Yeah. He, first he'll argue with you, and then you'll start to argue back with him, then he'll say, okay, why? Why do you say that? Why do you say I'm so good? We, uh, we got to keep him pumped up because like, like the gentleman over here said, he, he, he won Bristol tonight. He's probably about five minutes away from forgetting about it, and figure out how to win this Baja race Wednesday. <laughs> 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 That's not funny. Any other questions? <laughs> Anything else? Upstairs, we good? <laughs> Must be. Okay, congratulations, Kyle. Thank uh, you. Just a great week here at Bristol. Appreciate it, Kerry. Dave, JD, congratulations. I saw that before the race. I, I was thinking, I was like, man, how... I wanted to go over there and sign something for her, but I was just like, man, I, I don't have anything on me. I was like, come on, what do I... I almost pulled the Toyota sticker out of the inside of the car and signed it and walked over there and put it on her sign, but I knew she'd probably get run over. So like the girl with the checkered flag that I did last year after the race, I mean, that was a cluster. So I was just like, better not. Yeah. Yeah, that was cool. She's cute. Congratulations. Thanks, Pierre. You bet. Congratulations, Dave.